This is the River, River Legacy Cardboard Boat Regatta at Hurricane Harbor, and uh, we build cardboard boats. Push out, push out. There you go. I'm here with the Lamar High School, and I'm here representing the school, Cardboard Boat Regatta. We're going to show our stuff here today. We've been working on this boat since the beginning of April, and here we are today. It's going to be really fun. It reinforces all the uh, applications that we're teaching them in the classroom. They do buoyancy calculations for the boat, uh, 62 pounds of water per cubic foot, and they figure out how much their weight in the boat will displace the water. So it's a real life application. Yes, we're side. I've been in robotics for a couple of years now, so I'm definitely a veteran on this team. Uh, and so they wanted me to help out with the design of the boat and how um, they wanted to put it together. This is actually an engineering challenge for us. So we're representing our stuff, we're representing our school, and we're representing the big ideal of Boat Regatta. It's so much fun. So I want to introduce to you our resident engineer, Ryan Haig. And Ryan works with uh, CPNY in Fort Worth, so he knows about all of this stuff. He's not one of those engineers, you know, with the striped hats that runs trains. He's one of the different kind of engineers. That was a joke. <laughs> Come on up, Ryan. Ryan Haig is going to talk to us about engineering and uh, what to watch for. And make note, I'm going to come back and ask you questions, trivia questions, about what he presents and I'll give you some prizes with him. All right, Ryan Hay. Good morning, everyone. Everyone ready to learn about engineering? Of course, who wouldn't be? All right. <clears throat> Ordinarily, a gentleman named Jeff Williams gives this presentation, and he does a heck of a job at it. I have uh, have taken some notes on what he's given, but he can't make it today, so I'm going to try to take his place. I competed on two nationally ranking concrete canoe teams, so I do know a thing or two about making weird stuff float. <clears throat> We're gonna go through a few pictures of some boats that have competed in the past. I know a few of you said that you've been part of this competition before, so since I haven't, if you know more about one of these boats than I do, feel free to yell at me, just tell me what I'm missing, and I am a-okay with that. I do not have my feelings hurt very easily. Uh. All right, so this first boat is, has what looks to be a twin hull. You've got people on either side paddling, and you, you see the width and the stability that goes into this boat. Those girls are not going to tip very easily. Pay attention to the prow. This is going to be really important. We're going to talk a lot about prows and cutting water. And, and essentially being able to, to propel your boat forward with as little effort as possible. This boat, on the other hand, I'm sorry, this boat is also very stable. You see the, the width that's going into that. And these guys have a really cool presentation. But both of these boats are really good looking. Um, you're you're going to see a lot of, <clears throat> you're going to see a lot of artistry going into these boats. And that, that makes this competition an awful lot of fun. All right, I've, I'm, I'm tired of looking at stable boats. I want to see some people tipping over. So here's what we've got. These gentlemen are about to lose it. Their boat is really tall and narrow. This means that they ride high in the water. And when you ride high in the water, your center of gravity is, is above the water line. And that makes it very easy to tip. The, the boat might look great, and you might be able to sit in it with no problem, but remember that you're going to be reaching out to paddle. So if you start veering off track and everybody reaches out to one side, you're going to fall in the water, the, as these gentlemen learned. Got a couple of boats right here. <clears throat> Let's look at the green boat here on the left. They've just got a flat front. They they raised the front of their boat a little bit out of the water, so they're able to cut the water a little bit smoother. We're going to talk about prowls a little bit more in depth here in a minute. 
more another flat boat these um these gentlemen are having a hard time paddling their boat because it's just pushing a lot of water all right types of holes this is where the engineering stuff kicks in type a that you see on the top left of your page is a very stable hole you see it, it's got a lot of width to it the sides are curved so it can roll a little bit without rolling into the water. You look at D, and the moment you reach out to the side, if you're rowing a boat with hole letter D, it's gonna roll. So that's a really attractive, really nice looking hole, but you're gonna tip pretty much immediately. B is somewhat counterintuitive. You look at B, and it's, it's easy to think that that boat's not gonna go anywhere. It, it's, it's got the best stability of any of the holes that are on here. If you have a good solid prow that's gonna cut water, you can build a winning boat with hole B because it's stable, you're not gonna be rolling back and forth, you're gonna be able to paddle it without having to constantly adjust to keep yourselves upright in the water. C is kind of a flat-edged version of A. I think C would be a good solid hole. I've never seen a boat built with C. Any, any former competitors? Anybody? No. C offers a lot of stability. You're going to roll side to side a little bit more than you would in A or B. <clears throat> D, as I mentioned, is, is not not very stable at all. E is another one that's somewhat counterintuitive. That one tends to roll quite a bit just because of the shape of the bottom of the hole. F is a nice fast hole. You're going to be able to get you're really going to be able to get going in F and it's very stable. The big problem you're going to see with using a twin hole design like that is turning. That thing is going to be an absolute bear to try to turn around. Here's some different prow shapes that we can look at. As we mentioned earlier, the one, this one here on the top left, the Shirley you just knows, all you're going to be doing all day is pushing water. The, it's not going to cut any water at all, which is going to make paddling very laborious. It's, this is not going to move. If you're not trying to move, if you're just trying to build a showboat, that's just fine but that's not going anywhere. There's one on the top right. The moment you get any kind of velocity, the nose of your boat is going underwater, which is not good. <clears throat> so now we start getting into some more of the cutting type hold, uh, nose designs. Right here, middle on the left, you have the V nose. And any, really, any of these four would make that rectangular hole design we looked at earlier. Any one of these four would, would make that work. What you're trying to do is you're trying to cut the water away from your boat. Water, and can consider, think of, of car designs and how the, the fastest cars are always very sleek and they're, they're always very narrow at the front. Air and water are both fluid. They both function the same. You, you, want, you want to be able to push water away from your boat the way you want to push air away from your car. This slope nose is pretty good. Any of these slope noses are, are going to do really well for you. They're going to push water under and away from your boat. So they've really got a, two, a two-fold purpose. All right, now we're going to start getting into some math. Does anybody know how much water weighs? What, what the density of water is? I, I have a very, very excited volunteer. What's going on? Tell us how much water weighs. Approximately, yeah. About 60 pounds per cubic foot. What you want to ideally be able to do is any boat, I, I mentioned earlier that I used to race concrete boats, which doesn't make much sense. But as long as your boat displaces more water, a greater weight of water than it weighs, 
as long as the density of your overall boat is less than 60 pounds per cubic foot, you're gonna float. The question is how high and how stable. This is a one cubic foot box, and these gentlemen, they're gonna follow me up and talk about building your boats. We'll tell you that tape is not allowed, I believe, but we're gonna use this just for demonstration. This is one cubic foot. <clears throat> if you take 60 and divide it by 12, you get five. And there's 12 inches in a foot. So what that means is that I, if I put five pounds into this box, it's gonna depress it by one inch. Again, for every five pounds I add into this box, it's gonna submerge approximately an inch, and I'm getting ahead of myself there and talking about balance. So I've got two five pound weights in there, it's now approximately two inches underneath the water line. <clears throat> Here's a boat design that's about 15 cubic feet. So in water weight, that would weigh 900 pounds. 900 divided by 12 means that for every 75 pounds that's in that boat, it's gonna depress one inch. So if you have a 12 inch tall boat and 300 pounds in it, it's gonna depress four inches, so you're gonna have eight inches above the water line. <clears throat> now, let's talk about stability and center of gravity. I'm gonna be, Ryan, can you stand up for a moment, please? This is, this is my friend, Ryan Faulkner. He and I are gonna be paddling together for the, for the competition on what day? April, tw that's what, thank you. You can see quite easily that I'm a lot heavier than him. That, all right, you're, you're good now, thank you. That's, that's all I needed you to do. I just needed you to stand up so that everybody sees that I'm heavier than you. <laughs> so <clears throat> we talked a lot earlier about prows and, and the nose of your boat. We also need to talk about balance and, and getting the, the nose of your boat up above the water line because if the nose of your boat is shaped properly, but you have the heavier person in the front of the boat, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and separate these two boats, separate these two weights. If the heavier person is in the front of your boat, you're gonna be listing to the front, which means that the moment you get any velocity, that beautiful prowl that you developed could quite easily turn into a submarine nose. So, as you're planning, if you have a boat that just has a cockpit, if you have a boat that just has a cockpit, you want that cockpit not in the very back of your boat. You don't want it so far back that, you're right, that your nose is way up in the air. But you do want to make sure that you're conscious of balancing the weight in your boat towards the back half. That's going to lift your nose going to let water under your boat easier and it's going to give you a little bit of speed. Let's look at center of gravity. <clears throat> if your center of gravity is above the water line, as, as we saw with those gentlemen earlier, they had the really narrow boat, their center of gravity was above the water line, which made it a lot easier for their boat to tip over. The moment they reached out the side of that thing, that center of gravity got a little bit off the center, and boom, they went right into the water. If your center of gravity is lower, like this box right here, you give it a tip, and the gravity wants to bring it right back to the center position. So that, <clears throat> that is what you're looking for. You're looking for a boat that's got good width, doesn't ride too high in the water, you, you, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to be way up out of the water. And then another thing you have to consider when you're looking at being way up out of the water is paddling. We've seen boats in the past where people would reach out the side and they couldn't even reach the water with their paddle. And if you can't paddle, obviously you're not going to win anything except maybe the Titanic award. So 
let's just look really quick at, at a couple of these different blue lines. And, and these gentlemen that are gonna be coming up behind me are gonna talk a little bit more at length about actually building your boat, actually designing it. But you, you wanna be thinking ahead. And these, general, these folks right here, you see right here, this second panel on each side, that's gonna be your height panel. And the, this particular, <clears throat> thank you, uh, this particular blue line is for a 12 inch tall boat. And then <clears throat> this one is going to this one is going to be a little bit wider, two and a half foot wide, two two foot, pardon me, two foot two inches deep. So this is a little bit more of a square hole. They're going to have a lot of stability on this. They've got their sloped and V nose to make sure that they're able to cut water. Just another example of some potential blue lines you could draw up. And here is a fun wreck. So, any questions? Does anybody understand anything? <laughs> did, did, I, did I get the info across? I hope so. Well, I'm going to be around, so if you guys have any questions, please come and find me. Um, I'm more than willing to help you out. And these gentlemen behind me are going to talk a little bit about actual construction. Good. Thank you, Ryan. I'd like to give your mic to, to Gary. Ryan Hay. Thanks. The boat's getting wet. <laughs> All right. Hey, I forgot to mention one, one fun fact that, uh, that we discovered, and that is that uh, has, has anybody heard of the USS Fort Worth? Remember, that was the ship that was launched in Corpus Christi, I think, and it was a, uh, it's called a, a Navy littoral combat ship. Uh, uh, and that boat was launched in Corpus Christi, named after the city of Fort Worth. And the person that built that, Jonathan, or the person that designed it, Jonathan uh, Applequist is his name, he, uh, he designed that boat. His first boat was named the last minute here at the Cardboard Boat Regatta. So, there is a career path for those that really, uh, pardon the expression, go overboard on, uh, on boats. All right, the next session, uh, the next two sessions actually, uh, are gonna be led by Gary Daly and Bob Sherwood. And Gary and Bob have done this for years. Gary happens to be uh, the owner operator of Random Hill Pharmacy, and they've been a uh, corporate challenge winner for years. And so we, uh, let's welcome them up to the stage. And they're gonna talk first about supplies. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna come in and interrupt it again, ask some follow-up questions to make sure you all are listening, and then we'll go into actually building the boat. Gary and Bob. There you go. Thank you, Jay. Well, uh, Ryan gave us a pretty good idea how to uh, put a boat on a piece of paper and uh, draw it up and get it designed and get ready to build, but obviously before you can build anything, you have to have the supplies in order to build it. So we're gonna just talk about some of the things that you might need to actually build a cardboard boat. Uh, what would be the number one item? Well, of course, some cardboard. Our rules uh, for the regatta state that the cardboard to be used must be corrugated cardboard. Well, what's corrugated? What's that mean? Everybody's seen an edge of a piece of cardboard before and you, there's a little waffle or a little weave in there. This is what's called corrugated cardboard. There are other types of cardboard that are just pressed flat in a hard sheet that don't have the corrugation in there. That's considered an illegal material, so you need to be sure and use corrugated, uh, corrugated cardboard. Well, okay, so that might bring up the question, where in the heck do I get corrugated cardboard? Well, refrigerator boxes, uh, shipping boxes, any, any, any kind of box you can put your hands on is, uh, is good material to use. Also though, what really is uh, very easy, a little more expensive, uh, but not for the school groups because you can get it free, is a big sheet of cardboard like this. Westlake's Arlington Hardware will have these available in big sheets and from year to year it varies in the size they have available, somewhere between four foot by eight foot and uh, I think this particular piece, when we started with it, it was five foot by nine foot but they're, they're somewhere in that range, four by eight, five by nine, five by 10, something like that. And those make really nice uh, uh, 
sheets of cardboard to start uh, designing your boat from. Um, now we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other supplies that go along with that. Obviously, you're going to have to have a tape measure, okay, to make, oops, excuse me, make your measurements on your boat, pencils, pens, make your marks. Um, a lot of this I know seems simple, but when you're getting organized and getting ready, it's sure more convenient to have everything you need together uh, to get started on your construction. Uh, then you need to have some kind of a knife to cut your cardboard with. A utility razor knife like this works good. Um, there's others, there's all kinds of styles of these. This is an old uh, carpet cutter's knife or a carpet installer's knife. They work nice too. Any kind of utility knife like that works good. Um, now, we're going to talk a little bit more about this in a little bit, but when, we, uh, when we're putting a boat together, we're going to make uh, different alterations to the cardboard. Some of them are going to be cuts. We're going to cut, actually cut pieces out. But there's going to be areas where we're just going to crease the cardboard. We're going to compress the flutes in the cardboard so we can make a fold and a bend to wrap that around. Well, how do you do that? Um, there's several ways you can do it, and we'll show, give you a, a hands-on or a, a demonstration on how to do that. This is my favorite little tool. It's just a, it's a little coping saw, but this little handle on here has just got a rounded edge on it, and we'll use that like this to create a crease on the, uh, in the cardboard. Good old fashioned crescent wrench works good. You can use a rounded handle on a crescent wrench. I'm just trying to give you some things that you might have around so you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff. That works good for creasing cardboard too. Now once we, once we get it folded or you know creased and we start folding it together, well we've got to hook that cardboard to itself. We use good old fashioned Elmer's wood glue, or this is tight bond wood glue. Uh, this is a yellow wood glue. You can use white Elmer's, doesn't matter. Uh, we've tried it with um, hot glue guns. Yeah, that works okay. You gotta, you gotta work pretty fast with a hot glue gun. Another thing we found, if it's a hot sunny day out, that hot glue sometimes will get soft and mushy and your boat can actually pull apart. So really the best thing to use uh, in my opinion, is uh, just a good old Elmer's or, or wood glue. So you've got, if you can envision this, you've kind of got your boat glued together now. Well, there's going to be some seams and joints and stuff that we need to uh, cover up with some tape. There's several different types of tape you can use. You can use good old fashioned masking tape. Um, here's some paper packing tape, just brown self adhesive packing tape, and it's a paper tape. That's okay to use. The one I like to use best, and this is really old school uh, paper tape. This is the old packing tape that has a backing on it that uh, you just get this wet with water and you lay it on your cardboard and wipe it out with a sponge. And this works really good, really good. A couple of examples of some tapes that you cannot use. Plastic, any kind of plastic tape. This is a, there, here's some duct tape or just plastic shipping tape. These are considered illegal materials. After all, we're building cardboard boats, so we want it to, we want it to be paper. We want it to all be paper based. We don't want a bunch of plastic on there. So uh, that just keeps it fun and exciting for everybody if we, you know, stick with the rules. Another thing that is okay to use um, on some of the seams and joints is you can use caulk. You can't coat your whole boat with caulk, wouldn't want to, but, you can. but we use this on seams and joints. This particular one, I use this one all the time, it's a DAP, Alex Plus, it's a uh, latex silicone combination caulk, it's relatively inexpensive, it's pretty easy to clean up, you can paint it, uh, paint over it, paint sticks to it good, that's why I like to use this one. You can also use, you can use a silicone caulk, but it's a lot more expensive takes longer to dry, um, and you really can't paint it. Paint doesn't really stick to it very well. So I like to, I like to use this kind of uh, a caulk. Now you're going to get to a point when your boat is all built, you're going to want to paint it. I recommend before you actually put color on your boat, put paint color on your boat, that you seal your boat with a polyurethane. Now there's two different kinds of polyurethane you can use. Got an example of both of them up here. 
this one, uh, this one is a water-based polyurethane, and this one is an oil-based polyurethane. The difference in the, the differences in the two: the water-based dries faster, uh, easier cleanup, costs a little bit more, um, but probably doesn't waterproof your boat as well as the oil-based polyurethane. So the the advantages to the uh, oil base are just the opposite. Uh, a little less expensive, a little harder to clean up, takes longer to dry, um, but does waterproof your boat better. And you can use either one. Uh, I, I like to, I've done I've done both, but I found that the polyurethane, the uh, oil-based polyurethane, waterproofs your boat quite a bit better. And I'd recommend at least two maybe three coats of polyurethane on your boat before you add, add your color to it. And uh, that, that, in effect, waterproofs your boat, and then you can come back and put any kind of uh, paint, paint you want on it. You can use good old latex house paint. I've got some of that up here. If you really, really want a good, strong um, waterproof finish, you can even use an oil-based enamel. And the same, the same uh, principles apply to water-based paint, the latex paint, versus the oil-based paint as they do on the polyurethane. Uh, water-based, easier cleanup, dries faster, a little less expensive. Oil-based, takes longer to dry, costs a little more, a little harder to clean up. So that, in a nutshell, is uh, the materials that you'll need to uh, build your boat. We've also, actually, I've got some little clamps up here, little clamps work good. And we'll give some examples of how to use all of these clamps here in our next session when Bob and I get up here. And what we're going to try to do in a relatively short period of time is uh, take this uh, piece of cardboard we've got some lines in, and marks on and try to fold this and uh, fabricate that into a small boat. It won't be big enough for a person to actually get in. It'll be kind of a scaled down version or a model size. But we'll work on that here just a little bit and kind of we're going to buzz through that pretty fast, but we can hang around afterwards and answer any questions you might have. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it back to Jay for a second and see if anybody was paying attention to anything that I said. This guy over here was sleeping a minute ago. I saw him. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Gary's going to be back up in a second if you want to give him, uh, give him some applause. He's... <laughs> Once again, Gary Daly, Bob Sherwood. Y'all thought you'd gotten rid of me already, hadn't you? All right. Ryan has gone through designing your boat a little bit. We've talked about the materials here. Now, if you can just envision having your materials gathered up. Okay, before you get started, though, you've got to, you've got to lay your boat out. You've got to design it. You've got it designed, but you've got to get it on a piece of paper, and you've got to work with it. I really encourage everybody to do kind of what we've done up here. I've got, this is just a rough drawing. And you can see this kind of looks like what we've got here. I just drew it out rough on a piece of paper. Okay, and then after I did that, I transferred that drawing or that concept onto a piece of, uh, of a manila folder, good old manila file folder. Now, if you can, I don't know if you all can see that in the back or not, uh, but I like to do that. I've, I've done several boats over the years, and I always like to do this and lay it out and take this and fold it together and see, kind of get an idea of what my boat's going to look like. So I took this manila folder, the drawings on there, cut it, creased it, bent it, taped it together to kind of get an idea of what my boat's going to look like. And uh, I've done that several times where I get it and I fold it and put it together and I said, no, that's not what I wanted it to look like. And I can go back and change it and I can make modifications in doing it over. And this is real fast and real easy. Whereas if you start right away, and you don't do this, and you put it on a big piece of cardboard like this and fold it together, and you get it all shaped up a little bit, and you go, oh, well, I didn't think it was going to look like that. I really thought it was going to look like something else. Make the mistakes on a manila folder or a piece of cardboard or a sm small piece of uh, construction paper or anything like that. Make a couple of mistakes there. You can do this in, you know, a half hour or so, whereas if you, you lay that all out and fold it up together, you've got many, many hours of time into that only to find out your boat doesn't look quite like you wanted it to. Okay, so now that we've completed that portion of it, we're going to take this big slab of cardboard that we've, uh, we've laid out here, 
And we've done a lot of, as you can see, we've done a lot of the marks and we've done some of the cuts just so we can move along a little bit faster here. But if you look at this, um, you can see some dashed lines, a couple of different sizes of dashed lines actually. And then you also see some solid lines on here. Well, the solid lines are areas where we're going to actually cut the cardboard with a, a utility knife. And then the uh, dashed lines are areas where we're going to crease the cardboard and we're going to make a, a, a fold or a cut, I mean, a, excuse me, a fold or a crease at that point and try to shape this thing up into a, a small boat and give you an idea what that's going to look like. So without further gabbing on my part, we'll get started on this. Um, when, we're, when we're making a cut, I always like to use a straight edge of some sort. We've got a couple of different ones here we can use. You can use, a, you can use a big ruler like this, or even for some of these long cuts or long creases. We've got this guy here that works pretty good. You may or may not have that. If you don't, just a long piece of wood frequently works like a, a one by four piece of wood will make a good straight edge. But we're gonna make a couple of cuts on here. And uh, like I said, we did a bunch of this ahead of time so you wouldn't have to sit here and watch us do a whole lot of this. And I'm going to try to do this without cutting the mayor's table all up. Now this is a single ply cardboard that we're working with here. Uh, a lot of the bigger boats, when you build them, uh, Westlex Hardware will have available a double ply cardboard. And for the bigger boats, and most boats really, you're going to want to use double ply cardboard. We use this single ply here just because it's a, a little easier to work with for demonstration purposes so we can move, move along a little faster. I'm gonna just get this guy cut out here real quick. And then we'll show you how to make some uh, creases and folds. Did anybody bring any Band-Aids? <laughs> I hope we don't need them, but we might. Bob's gonna give me a hand here. Okay, so we got that little chunk cut out of there. Now this guy, grab me that creasing tool there, Bob. You know what? I jumped ahead of myself here a little bit. I'm going I'm to back up. Let's put. I'm going to put this away for just a second. I forgot one thing that I wanted to do. You'll see, you'll see here in a minute when we fold this up, it's going to be a relatively small boat. Um, and to make a bigger boat like some of these guppy or whale sized boats, we're going to have to take sheets of cardboard like this that are four foot by eight foot, and we're going to have to splice several of them together to make one great big sheet that we can fold up into a sized boat that will actually carry some people. Now, just for demonstration purposes, we cut out four small pieces of cardboard here. If you can just envision these being, these pieces being um, four foot by eight foot, if you can just envision that, here's simply all we would do to splice these pieces together is we'd lay these out. You need a big area to do this in, but we'd have to, we'd lay them out on the floor and get them lined up like this. And a lot of times what we'll do before we uh, actually start gluing them is take uh, a piece of masking tape just to kind of hold them in position a little bit. We'll just put a piece of masking tape to hold these guys straight while we're getting ready to glue them together. There again, masking tape is a, an approved material, so we can, we can use all of that we want. Okay, so now I, I kind of just have these taped together, just kind of holding them in position a little bit. But to splice those, what we're going to do is we're going to take another piece of cardboard and, and glue it up and overlay the splice with that. And we're going to talk a fair amount more about... Um, glue and how much to put on and how to put it on here in just a little bit. The thing with this glue 
you, you, you kind of have to, you got to get the right amount on there. If you get too much, it takes too long to dry. If you don't get enough, it doesn't stick well enough. And so you just want a thin layer to, to coat one side. You don't need to coat both sides of the, the cardboard. And that's pretty good right there. It's about like that. And then what we'll do is we'll just lay that on there. Grab a couple of those weights over there. Oh, yeah. Here's something that we'll frequently do. Just anything you've got sitting around, just to put a little pressure on it to create a little downward pressure to hold that in place for a few minutes while that glue dries. And we'll do another one here real quick. And I'm not going to spread that one out so we can keep moving along, but I'll just kind of jiggle it back and forth, and that, that spreads it out a little bit for us. Now I'll throw a weight on there real quick. Now you'll be surprised at how fast this glue dries once you get to working on it a little bit. Ryan, the engineer, could probably answer this question better than I, but um, how does this glue dry? Well, basically what happens is the paper in the cardboard will uh, absorb the moisture out of that glue. Grab another weight there, Bob absorb the moisture out of this glue and out into the cardboard and as that that moisture comes out or the water comes out of that cardboard it gets sticky pretty fast we can let that set there for just a minute or two and uh, you'll be surprised at how fast that sets up because it that moisture is being wicked or absorbed into that cardboard pretty fast okay so now now we've built we've built a, a bigger piece out of four smaller pieces. And here again, if you can envision this, these being four by eight sheets, you've got a pretty big piece of cardboard laid out now. Um, you'd have an eight foot by 16 foot piece. Now we've built some uh, whale class boats that hold 10 people that are 22, 23 feet long. And um, we end up putting nine sheets together Okay, so nine sheets were 12 feet across and 24 feet long. We've got a big old slab of cardboard that we've uh, put together to make a big whale class boat. Now for a, a dolphin or a guppy, you know, you don't have to have that much, but you need more than one piece. And so this is, this is how you get to that. And uh, when we crease, you'll see some uh, examples of creasing here in a little bit. Uh, th this is double thickness in here, but you crease that just the way you would crease any of the other cardboard. We just uh, use our creasing tool, and we'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Sorry, I forgot that step. But All right, so now if we can just pretend again for a minute. We've spliced uh, several big sheets of cardboard together to make this guy. We did a cut there a second ago. Now... The creasing is very important, and uh, we'll uh, give you a, a quick lesson on creasing. There's not much to it. These dashed lines on here, all we do is take a straight edge, and like I said, this is, this is my favorite little tool. If it turns up missing during cardboard boat building season, I'm having an anxiety attack. I've been using this for a long time, and it works great. Uh, but we just put our straight edge along our line and just gently go back and forth. And what that does is it compresses these flutes, these waffles we talked about a minute ago, it compresses those down, it squeezes them flat, and that allows you to make a nice, straight, even crease. Okay. See that? It compressed right there. If I, try to, if I try to fold that along that line without creasing it first, it's just going to crease where it wants to. So it's really pretty easy. It's a little more difficult with the double ply cardboard, but you just have to be patient and go over it several times. And here again, you can use this or the handle of a crescent wrench or handle of a pair of scissors or you know something that's just nice and round and is not going to gouge or dig into your cardboard. And, and rip your cardboard. Now, a lot of cases, you're going to accidentally rip your cardboard. You're going to get going a little too fast, and uh, you might rip that cardboard, but that's, 
it's not that big a deal, but it does weaken that joint or that seam a little bit. So you need to be careful and just, just be patient and go slow with your creases. Now what you'll find is when you're creasing across the flutes, okay, if these are the flutes of your cardboard, if you're creasing across them, it's not, it's not uh, very easy to rip that cardboard, but you can. But if you're creasing along with the flutes, you get down in between a couple of those flutes and press a little bit too hard, it rips pretty easy. So you need to be a little careful going with the flutes as opposed to going across the flutes. Okay, now we've, we've uh, kind of pre-creased a lot of this, and uh, so we're going we're gonna to start going here and, and see if we can shape this thing into a boat. Now, here's a, when you get, uh, if you've got a great big slab, you're building a whale class or a dolphin class boat, and you've got double thick cardboard you're trying to crease, it's not going to crease as easy as this single ply here. And what works nice, if you lay a, a long straight edge, it can be a two by four, or a piece of wood, or one of these things, right along the edge of that crease, and put some pressure down on it, and like you can see it's doing here, and you lift up. Okay, see we got a nice straight crease. See our dash line kind of disappeared there. I don't know if you can see it when we hold it up there. Our dash line kind of disappeared. There it is again. So that crease goes right along there. Now we've got several other creases that we need to make here. And uh, when you got two that are close together, like these two right here, that's another good opportunity or another good situation where you want to keep a straight edge all the way along the whole thing and keep a little pressure on it. Okay, and we're going to come over here and catch this one. Okay, now we've got, we've got another crease on the back side of this that you can't see, but we're going to just flip it down right now. Now, you can see some of these, when we're folding these, we're folding them past 90 degrees. We're, we're not just folding it right here. We're folding it and coming past just a little bit. And what that's going to do for us is when it comes time to glue this together, that cardboard's not trying to pull away from us. It's, it's, uh, it's a little more relaxed, so it'll fit together better. So we're going to fold this up here a little bit. And uh, so we're going to fold this past 90 degrees there a little bit. Okay, so that's coming up. Okay, so that's kind of one side of our boat. It's, it's starting to come together here a little bit. I'm going to hold this up one more time. As you can see, we had these dashed lines where we wanted to make our creases. And if you'll remember, they're all gone now, but we had some solid lines where we made our cuts. I've got this long dashed line in the middle. What that is, is that's just a reference point for us where we want to bring the edge of this piece of cardboard to. We're going to bring it so we get that right where we want it. That's the way we've designed it. We're going to bring it right to that point, and then and we're going to glue it there. Before we do that, though, we're going to make a couple of more creases. Let's cut these uh, tabs off a little bit, Bob. Just the, these here, I think that we made those a little too long. These little tabs we got here, we cut those just a little too long, so we're going to cut about a half or three-quarters inch off of that. Now that's a little, you just saw me just reach up and grab that. That's a fairly short crease and it's with the flutes. And a lot of those you can just, you don't have to use the straight edge. You don't have to get fancy. You can just bend it real quick. We're going to do the same thing on the other side here real quick. I just grabbed that and fold it up. Now that, that little tab there, this is something you'll learn after doing a little bit, or when you practice with your manila folder, you can see, okay, that, that little tab that we were cutting off, it's going to fold. This is the side of my boat. This is the side wall of my boat. This is going to fold in here very nicely, and later on we're going to talk more about bulkheads, but we're going to put a bulkhead, or fancy term for a boat wall, or a boat uh, interior wall, we're going to put it right across here, and that gives us something to glue that to. 
If we, if we didn't have that tab there, then I'd just have an air space in there and I wouldn't have anything to glue to. So I'm gonna fold that in there like that and we're gonna put that bulkhead in there in a little bit. Now we're gonna go around here and make a few more cuts and creases real quick so we can start gluing this thing together. I think we need to... Uh, we're gonna cut some of this off here because this is gonna fold up inside of here. Here, here again, we've pre-creased this and that's a short one, so I can just grab that and fold it up there. We're gonna go around and do some creases here real quick. All right, here Bob's grabbed the straight edge so we can do these long ones again. And it's gonna go out of sight for you here, but. All right. Okay, there again, we're going, trying to go past 90 degrees a little bit, and that'll, we'll have to fight it less. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, now we've got one more crease on the back side of this here. I don't know if you can, I didn't put a dashed line on that. I don't know if y'all can see that, but we're going to just, all right, and that piece, that piece is ultimately going to come back and glue to the bottom of our boat. All right, this is kind of a big old flappy piece of cardboard here. I mean, there's, you know, you're looking at that going, man, are we going to get in that? I mean, what's going to happen when we get in that thing? Well, you'll see as we get a little further along here, as we shape this up and put it together, it's going to gain rigidity. It's going to gain stiffness as we go along here. So right now we're going we're gonna to glue these flaps right here, or these tabs, down to the center portion. This is, this is going to be the bottom of the center of our boat right here, this section right here. And we're going to swing this down and we're going to glue it and we're going to bring it to that big dash line that we showed there. Just so we can move along a little faster, we're not going to trowel this out every time. We're just going to swizzle it on there a little bit. You know, I say that. I say this every year we do this. I say we're not going to trowel it out, and then what happens? Trowel. He's troweling it out. He's killing me. <laughs> you got to do it right. <laughs> and my glue's not wanting to come out. All right, here we go. Yeah. That's glue. It's not enchiladas, okay? Huh. Sorry, that was a little tacky, wasn't it? All right, so we're gonna we're gonna flip that up. Bob's gonna here. We're gonna use our little trusty uh, weight plates on this again here, just to have a little weight to put some pressure on that to hold it in place. We got four or five of these here, and we're gonna stick those on there. And here again, I think you'll be surprised at how fast. We got one more. You'll be surprised at how fast this glue gets together. Lost my deal there. All right, we're going to swing around the other side and get a little glue on uh, this other tab here. Did you notice he takes the glue, good blue, glue bottle every time? Can't be bashful. Now we're, we're uh, speeding along here just so we can get through this. But if you'll, I want to show them this. If you'll look at the amount of glue we have right in this area, that's about the amount of glue you want to use. We're a little thin on that end down there probably. But th th you get it much thicker than that and it takes too long to dry and it, your cardboard will wrinkle because there's so much moisture going into your cardboard. Um, you get any less than that, you don't get good adhesion. It doesn't stick well. All right, now. You kidding? Yeah, speaking of not sticking well. All right, we're going to flip this up in here, and then we're going to put these weights back in there. And 
And we're going to stick it together here. Grab those. Are those clamps long enough, Bob? Oh. The long clamps. I don't know if those are. No? Okay, we're just going to put these clamps along there, and that just kind of holds, that's going to hold our boat in position a little bit. While we let this glue set up for a second or two. All right, now, I know we got this laying flat and you can't see inside of there, but we're getting ready to, to form up the stern of our boat. This side, this end down here is the stern of our boat or the back of our boat. I'm going to hang this over here a little bit. This, we've got to let this glue set up a little bit. I know you can't see it, but we've got a little tab right underneath here that's sticking up. We're going to bring this around and fasten that to there. And this tab here, it's going to fold inside. These, these guys are going to come together on the back right here. Okay, we're going to hook those to each other to form a nice point, point on the back of our stern. And uh, we'll do the same thing on the bow or the prowl up here. Same thing, we've got those tabs and they're, 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 the cardboard's like this. If this is your flutes, it's folding inside and we're going to stick it together right there. Now, you, you've seen us use these weights as a clamping device, if you will. Another thing we use as a uh, clamping device just these little scissor clamps, they work great. We're gonna use those here in a minute. Another thing that we do a lot with is just good old masking tape. We'll use a piece of masking tape to pull two pieces of cardboard together while we're letting that glue set up and dry a little bit. It will, it will if you're not careful. You gotta pull it off gently because it'll leave a little uh, acne on there uh, when you pull it off, but um, Yeah, well, it's, it's tweaked a little because oh, okay. of, of that right here. We're going to have to let this set just a second, I think. Can I yeah, that's fine. Uh, it's just a little crescent wrench, or not a crescent wrench, a uh, coping saw. Any hardware, Home Depot, anybody's got them. Now, I, mine had a, you know, they have a little blade, a little saw blade in there and it rubs my hand raw, so I just, I just took that saw blade out of there and put a little piece of uh, bailing wire across there so it's a little more comfortable to grip on your hand. But uh, I've got two of them, and it's just a little coping saw. They're, they're not expensive. It's, I don't know, $2.99 or something, and they work, they work great. Sometimes the crescent wrenches uh, will have a little lip or a little ridge on them where they're molded together, and it'll... Uh, Sometimes that'll cut your, cut through your cardboard a little bit. Okay, with a little bit of luck, this should be stuck together halfway decent now. Bob's gonna pull that off of there. Tell you what, Bob, let's put a piece of tape across, across the top of there. And we're gonna try to put a piece of tape across the middle of this to just kind of hold this boat in the position we ultimately want it in. Okay. With the clamps we had on there a minute ago, it was, it was pulling our sides in a little too much, and then this, what, which doesn't allow this to fit together the way we want it to. Okay. Now, we were talking about that a minute. I was trying to show you these tabs inside of here. I think maybe you can see them a little better now. We've got these tabs, and we're going to put a little glue on those guys right here, and we're just going to fold this in here and across right here. This will be an area where we'll want to use a piece of tape just to hold that together. And we'll show you another technique for clamping or holding glued areas together here in just a minute. All right, I'm gonna tip him up on his side and we're gonna put a little glue right in here on this tab and Bob, I'm sure, is gonna insist on trialing it out. Yep, <laughs> called that, didn't I? I'll do that top next time. Uh, not yet. Now right down in here where this comes down in here where it's really getting to a small surface area. This is a, this is a point where boats leak a lot, right in these little corners. So I always like to get, make sure I get glue down in there good. Now here you can see, here we've got a little glue dripping here. Where's it? Bob, we always keep a damp towel around to wipe that off. You can wipe it off as soon as it gets on there. 
If you don't, it's not that big a deal, but if you want your boat to look real nice and pretty, uh, you don't want any glue drips on there. Okay, now the bad part about wiping it down is now it's wet and the tape sometimes doesn't stick very good. We'll see how we do here. We'll, we'll get to caulking here in a little bit. All right, uh, let's put one more on there, Bob. Now here's, here's a trick that makes uh, some veteran boat builders cringe a little bit, but it works nicely. If that tape was slipping or we were in an area where uh, we were having trouble getting the clamp on it, we'll just shoot a little screw in there. Okay, we shoot a little screw in there. Now the rules say that you can't use screws on your boat. You can use it at this point, but when your glue dries, that screw's got to come out because we don't want screws in boats that somebody else might be rowing and, and cut themselves or poke themselves with a screw. And you're thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, that guy just punched a hole in his boat. Well, we'll come back and show you how to deal with that here in a little bit. Okay, we're going to flip this up, and we're going to do the same thing on this other side over here. I'm going to just... Normally, I wouldn't like to flip this crease backwards, but I'm going to just so you can see what's going on in here. Now these two tabs that are coming together here in the front, I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on that now because when we pull this around, sure wish you'd trial that, Bob. I'll take care of that. Okay. You want to do the other one? Yeah, we got a little extra glue there, so we're going to throw it on there and try not to get too much glue on the mayor's carpet. Does anybody know the mayor? Okay. Now these, we're going to fold these guys inside right there. Sometimes you got to wrestle with these a little bit. All right, I'm going to turn him upside down so we can work on him here a little better. And that got in a bind there somehow. Okay, that little corner got in a little bind. I had to wrestle with it to get it loose. Put a piece of tape on there. All right, we got smarter. We put our tape on first, and now we're going to wipe our glue off. That's good. Okay. So now we've got the, uh, the stern of our boat kind of glued together there a little bit. Now, you can see, all right, we don't have such a floppy piece of cardboard anymore. It's starting to get a little stiffer, starting to get a little more rigid. You know, we got a little something going on here. And that's going to continue to improve as we add more and more structure to this boat. So we're going to just do real quick, we're going to do the same thing on the front we just did on the back. And I'm going to get up in this corner here real good. Okay. All right, Bob's going to slap a little tape, just a couple pieces of tape on there to hold that together for us. Yeah, one more right there should be good for now. What's that? Well, my prow or the, my bow of my boat, the triangle on it's a little bit longer than the back. Now, I've seen boats that uh, it's the same length front and back, and then it doesn't matter. We've seen boats in races where they, uh, during the heat of the battle, get turned around and they're going backwards. And in, instead of trying to turn the boat around, the crew members will just turn around and, and paddle the other way, which is pretty quick thinking, really. All right, we're going to tuck that inside of here like we did on the other end. I'm going to turn this up so we can see what we're doing here a little better. A second, Bob. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to put a clamp inside there. Okay. Now we talked about these little, uh, these little kind of clamps. Hold this up for me, Bob. Where these two tabs come to the middle in there, we're going to reach down in there and put a clamp right down in there to hold that together.
And we really should have done that on the back too, so it's not too late. That glue is still moist enough on the back that we can still do that. All right, and we, our tape popped off up there, Bob. I'm gonna pull this tape across here a little bit. It popped up off on us. Yep, yep. We've done that too, where you, you just basically make a, a crease like this, you know, rather than straight up and down. And that, that works nicely too. We were just trying to do one that's fairly simple to get put together in a short period of time here. Okay, so now this guy, he's, he's shaping up again. And Bob, if you grab that end, you can see it's getting, getting a little more rigid all the time. And I'll tell you that one of the keys to making a boat rigid and hold together good for you, number one, these hollow walls like this work great to add, add some additional rigidity to the boat. But one of the big keys is having bulkheads or walls in there. So we're gonna slide some bulkheads and walls in here real quick. We're gonna put one in the front, one in the back, and then we're gonna put one in the middle here too. We're gonna to slap these in there real quick. Kind of running short on time. He loves doing that. He was mad that I did the first one, but. Okay, so we're gonna glue all of these tabs up, all four of these tabs on these little bulkheads. And I'm gonna slide one in there and kind of just show you how that goes. Now, if you remember, earlier I showed you we had these little tabs that fold inside the wall here. So I need to put a little glue on that, those guys there too, to stick our, uh, stick this bulkhead. So I'm gonna reach down in here. Wipe it off, wipe it off. Okay, you can see I put a little glue on those tabs down in there. I don't know if everybody can see that or not, but this bulkhead we're getting ready to stick in there is gonna fit to there. I premature, prematurely glued one of these, uh, the top flap on this. We weren't quite ready for that yet. Now this, these become a little wrestling match sometimes, sliding these down in here, because this boat's getting more rigid and getting firmer, that fit in there pretty good. Okay, so we got, we got a front wall in there now. Now we're gonna go to the back and do the same thing back there. Same thing, I'm gonna hit a little glue on these tabs that fit inside the walls there. All right, slide this guy down in there. Now here, let me, sh I, I did that last one kind of quick. This tab here is gonna stick to the floor at the bottom of my boat. These here are gonna come right up in this area right here and stick to that outside wall of the boat. Okay, starting to look like a boat. Need to, yeah. Now, this trick we did here, we're gonna do again here just to hold this together. Let's put one across it. Just kind of hold that in position while that bulkhead dries. And we might even hit that with another piece of tape there to kind of get that in position. And here again, this would be a good spot. You could use a screw if you wanted to, but we won't. All right, now these, uh, I'm gonna flip it up here. You can see these little tabs are overlapping each other a little bit. Okay, so I want, I'm gonna put a cover on this. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll just call it a bow cap or a stern cap. And, but I want these nice and flat and even, so I'm gonna do, basically I'm gonna do what I call a double cut, where I'm gonna cut through both layers of cardboard at the same time to the corner. 
All right. Now I cut them both and see then it comes together perfectly. I'm cutting through both layers at the same time and that gets that to line up just perfect there. I'm going to do the same thing on the front here. And one more over here. And Okay, Bob's pulling our clamps out of there. That's set up. Okay, now that I did that, those, those all fit together nice there, and I've got a nice tab or a nice flap to, to glue our bow cap to. Pencil. All right, now an easy way. Go ahead, you go ahead and do that. We're going to put a cover on here, and we're going to get this lined up, and I'm just going to hold it down, and Bob's going to just simply trace it underneath, and then we'll cut it out from there. Seems simple, but it works. Got a little scribble there. He got a little wide there, but we'll, we'll cut it to that inside one, and I think it's going to fit. While he's doing that, we're going to talk about this uh, center bulkhead. Okay, now this one's, you know, these other bulkheads we put in here, they were just, just a flat piece. All right, this one's going to be a little different. Okay, we're going to make a box, basically, and that's going to fit down in the center of our boat there, and that's going to create another bulkhead right in the middle. If you can swing over here for a second, Bob. He, watch, we, we grab this boat now. It's getting pretty rigid, but I can still twist it. I can still twist it and turn it just a little bit. But we get this center bulkhead in here that really solidifies the boat. So I think I'm going to pull this tape off of here right now. And if you pull it off real easy like that, just kind of gently go like that, it won't pull the, uh, it won't rip the cardboard so bad. Now, if you leave it on there a long time, if you leave it on overnight or something, then it, then it gets a little harder to get off. Okay, Bob's going to swing around and put that, that front uh, bow cap on there. I'm going to glue up this bulkhead real quick. Okay, we just slap that glue on all of those tabs real quick. Now this is kind of a forehand operation here. I'm going to need Bob's help to help me push this down in there. We're going to sh shape this up like a, a little box. And yeah, we got a little glue on there, and I didn't... Normally we would measure that and make sure we get that right in the center, but for today's exercise, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to put a piece of tape right across there, glue that guy in place, and uh, wipe a little excess glue off here real quick. This is it. These center bulkheads or walls like I just put in here, this is a key, key component to giving your boat strength and stability. Uh, normally if you're building a if you say if you built a dolphin boat that you had three passengers in, three crew members, make a compartment for each crew member by building a bulkhead or a wall between those sections, and it really gives a lot of strength and stability to your boat. All right, he, Bob did all the hard work here. I'm going to take the glory, put that on there, and we're going to just put a little weight on there. Sure. Okay, while Bob's working on that back one, I had to trim this off there just a little bit. While Bob's working on that back one, we need to talk about our, we're getting real close to having our boat constructed, but now we've got to waterproof this baby. We've got to make sure no water's going to get in there. We've got two different types of seams on this boat. Down on the bottom here, as soon as this dries up a little bit, I'll show you. But right down here, underneath here, we've got some exposed flutes. We've got some flutes of that cardboard that are exposed. 
If you don't get those covered up, man, water is going to go shooting in there and your boat's going to melt and go down pretty fast. So what's the best way to, to deal with that, to cover those flutes up? Well, the best way is with tape. Now, you, we use several different kinds of tape. We can use masking tape. Um, we can use this paper packing tape. This is pretty fast and easy, so I'm just going to use a piece of this right now. But what we would do, we'd pull our uh, masking tape off of here because our, our glue should be pretty dry underneath there. And we're just going to lay a piece of tape on there, fold it neatly under. Now, obviously, I didn't go the whole way, but that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do to protect those exposed flutes on, the, uh, on this area right here. Now, if you remember, up here on the front, we had two little tabs that folded together and came inside. Okay, so we, I call that a knuckle joint, or I don't know what you want to call it. I'll call it a knuckle joint for now. But up here, we've still got a seam where water can get in there, but we don't have any exposed flutes. So you can use tape there if you want to, but normally that's a seam where I would use caulk. And I'm not going to open a tube of caulk today. Everybody knows how to run a caulk. I guess we are going to open a tube of caulk. We've already got it open. Might as well. What we would do is just gently shoot a little caulk in that joint. And we'll spin this around here in a minute so you can see it. And then I normally just smooth it out with my finger, making sure I'm shoving it down in that in that joint a little bit and um, then you're gonna you know if you've got some excess on there I just use my finger or a, a damp towel and you wipe that excess off you'll be able to come up here when we're done and take a closer look at how that looks when that goes together but here again boy this stuff is this stuff is the greatest uh, Alex plus caulk by DAP um, they make it clear, white, different colors and stuff. This particular tube is white, and it's, it's a little grittier, a little grainier, and it kind of it dries a little faster, but I don't know, I like the clear. The clear has a little bit different texture to it, and I like the clear, and that's what I like to use. So we've just about got this baby put together. So if you can bear with me here, we've got two different types of seams that we need to cover. One with the tape, with we've got exposed flutes. A non-fluted seam or a knuckle seam, put some caulk in there. Once we've done all of those seams with, on the boat, we've taped them all or caulked them all, whichever is appropriate for that type of seam, then we're ready to waterproof our boat. Okay, you're at the point now where we're going to put the two or three or four coats of polyurethane on there and then follow that with whatever color scheme you want to. Now I'm going to talk just a second, I know I might be running a hair over here, but I'm going to talk just a second about class two boats also. This is what's called a class one boat. You're going to have crew members in here that are rowing with a paddle. We also have class two or a mechanical division boats. Class two boats um, follow all of the same rules as class one boats. The boats got to all be cardboard, got to use the same kind of tape, the same kind of uh, caulk, the same type of waterproofing, etc except it can have a propulsion system. It can have a propeller, it can have a paddle wheel, um, it could have a jet pump, you know, what, how, whatever kind of mechanical <coughs> propulsion system that you can dream up to put in that boat is okay. That, that uh, propulsion system has to be attached to the cardboard portion of the boat. Um, and that, that makes pretty fun and exciting stuff. They're a little more complicated, it's probably not a project for a first timer, uh, but but it's a lot of fun and usually from year to year we'll have anywhere from uh, five to maybe six or seven or eight class two or mechanical boats out there. Here Bob's gonna, we've got an, this other tape ready here now, I'm just gonna show you how this stuff works. This is uh, jumping around a little bit I know but we're trying to wrap up here. This uh, This is that old paper packing tape that I talked about in the supply segment. I just, I just dump it in a pail of water. I let the excess water run off of it. Gently smooth it on a seam. Take a sponge.
just wipe off the excess water and in about three minutes that'll be dry on there. Now there's another example of where we had some exposed flutes and we want to cover those flutes and this I really recommend you use that kind of tape because it's, it sticks good, stays on good. Any of this self-adhesive tape, this paper packing tape with self-adhesive or masking tape as uh, as it gets out in hot sun, sometimes that adhesive gets a little slippery or greasy on there and the, that tape will actually slip away. But anyway, now if we grab both ends of this little guy, we can just slap together here real quick. I can't, I can't twist or turn this at all. I mean, it's really stiff and really rigid. And the key to that is these, these bulkheads uh, that we put in there. But uh, I know we went through that awful fast, but we kind of wanted to give you an idea of what it takes to put a boat together and kind of what all the steps are and I th I th it's a little easier to visualize if you can see a somewhat finished product and uh, we'll be glad to stay after her and answer any questions you've got. Um, if anybody's got any detailed questions they want to ask about the class two or mechanical boats we've built uh, I don't know probably four or five six mechanical boats and they, they are more detailed and they do take more time and a little, little more challenging but they're, they're a lot of fun. And so I'd encourage anybody to ask any questions they have about mechanical boats or a regular class one boat well, after class here today. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to Mr. Ryan Good. and I'll go see if I can get the glue off my hands. There you go. Let's give a hand to our <laughs> boat builders extraordinaire.